Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, your go-to source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We hope you tune in often for all things people management, organizational development and change, organizational leadership, and social impact related. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Perry Gladstone and Ravi Rajkumar about tapping into your mojo mid-career. Harry Gladstone and Ravi Rajkumar, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thank you, John. I'm really stoked to be here. It's great to have both of you with me today. I'm so excited to have this conversation. Uh, we initially connected, I don't know, maybe a month, month and a half ago. Uh, so we've been preparing for this for a little while now. And uh, you really focus on something that I find to be quite interesting. And that is these types of cy- cyclical um adjustment periods that we go through in life and in adulthood, uh, whether it's personal life or, or career oriented. Uh, I certainly have felt that myself as I've gone through various transitions uh, and stages of my career. And I know that's uh, what you focus on in your work. So today, I thought framing this around tapping into your mojo, um, and specifically, you know, kind of this mid career framing, but understanding that that looks different for everyone and the timing is different for everyone. So, you know, some people talk about a midlife crisis uh, in relation to their career and their personal life, but it doesn't have to be, you know, in your forties or fifties, like it can happen anytime. Uh, And sometimes you go through multiple rounds of these kinds of transitions. Uh, So I'm excited to have that, that uh, conversation with you today. As we get started, I wanted to share Perry and Ravi's bios with all the listeners Perry Gladstone has a unique ability to see and articulate our greatest opportunities for success. With a boatload of experience and success across multiple industries, he has guided business leaders, rock stars, innovators, and disruptors, international aid, and developing countries around the world. Before formalizing his his advising career, Perry founded 10 influential companies in the action sports, entertainment, and media industries. He is the author of the critically acclaimed Fast and Hot, How to Open Hearts, Win Minds, and Create a Better Life in Business, co-founder of Somos Foundation of Costa Rica, and a celebrated recording artist under the name of Prince Perry. Equally at home on stage, in the air, or on the water, Perry is an avid surfer, paraglider musician, and former record holder in the sport of free diving. When not surfing, flying, serving his community, you can find him on the beach thinking about what makes good things better. I love that. Uh, Ravi Rajkumar is a hero maker and he loves bikes. His life's work is to work with individuals and organizations to create their MOG, their moment of glory and lasting legacy. He is a recognized leader in the brand strategy, experiential event, content, athlete, and product marketing space. He has produced award-winning sports marketing events and broadcasts on six continents for nearly every major action and adventure sport from Red Bull's live broadcast prop, uh, properties, to X Games, and both the summer and the winter Olympics. His experience has helped lead some of the world's best brands to deeper engagement with their audience. He has earned Organizer of the Year honors at the highest levels of the UCI and international media on both the road and mountain bike disciplines of cycling, as well as Emmys, Event Marketer, Addy, and Ace Awards, as well as Sports Business Journal's prestigious 40 Under 40 nomination. He earned his undergraduate and graduate degrees from the University of Florida. Let me just say, both of you are incredibly impressive people and your backgrounds are quite diverse. Uh, I, I love it. I love um, the passion you bring uh, to the work that you do. And I love your connection uh, with people and place and, you know, free diving um, 
Perry, that that's uh, incredible. I, I'm not even quite sure how to wrap my head around um, that. Uh, but thank you both for joining me. It's a real pleasure to have you both on the podcast today. Anything um, that either of you or both of you would like to share by way of personal background or context before we dive on in? Neither of us are under 40 anymore. <laughs> hey, don't tell, don't tell, come on. <laughs> <laughs> neither, neither am I. <laughs> We're all in good company. Well, wonderful. Um, thanks, John. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Ravi, anything you would like to add before we jump in? No, thanks for that wonderful intro. It's a little long in our bios, but uh, you know, we're regular guys that really like working with great people. And just looking forward to spending time with you today and walking through some of that, Jonathan. Great, great. Well, so as we get started, again, with this focus on mid-career transitions uh, and understanding that that can happen really at any stage in your career, um, I thought maybe we could focus on some of the instruments first, uh, start with some of the instruments that you and your, your organization provide to clients. And I, I completed a couple of these in preparation for this episode today. So we can start there and walking through those a bit, and then we can move more into a conversation about what that all means. Yeah, Perry. Sounds great. Um, terrific. Yeah. Well, so let me first just reference something you, you started with, which is this idea of, of transition and its cyclical nature. And I, I just kind of want to set it up real quick. Um, I discovered this by studying the work of Joseph Campbell and the hero's journey. Uh, there's a lot of wisdom. I mean, almost everything's been thought of before. It's just coming across it and finding the right teacher, you know, and that was one of the sources for me. And it was such an important discovery because I realized that this is normal. It is okay to doubt yourself, that we do reinvent ourselves every seven to 10 years. And going through that cycle can be very difficult and very frustrating if you don't know that it's part of the deal. So one of the things we really try to start with with everybody is just to acknowledge the fact that what you're going through this, if you're feeling uncomfortable, if you're feeling a little disillusioned, if the career isn't the right fit anymore, or you don't have the same kind of conviction that you had when you're younger, all of those things are normal. And we want to help you go through this process to understand how to rediscover you, you made reference to this idea of, of sort of, you know, knowing where your mojo is and being able to capture that to be able to capture that you have to start with knowing that you're going through this process. So we start with that we recognize people where they are. Um, and then once that door is open, we start the work and the work is not what career should I have, or am I doing the right thing? The work starts with who am I and how do I go through the world and understanding that at the most fundamental level. And because when you are in your right place, doing your work and by work, I mean the work you were meant to do, what you're born to do, what our actual purpose is, this is not about a profession. It's not about an industry. This is not about the role you play in your family. It's all of it. It's, it's the most fundamental part. And so the exercises we do with people is to dive into that and really understand what are these drivers? What is driving us emotionally? What are the fundamental ways in which we associate things so that, you know, how do we strive? Where is our intuition? All, where's our instinct, all of these kinds of things. So we've, we've used different tools from different places to sort of create this picture. And John, we asked you to do some of that before. And I, I thought maybe a great place to start was just to share a little bit of yours. Is that cool? Are you all right to do yeah, that out, absolutely. out loud? Yeah, absolutely. I am happy to be a <laughs> guinea pig. Because your mojo comes from when you are plugged into what we call your engagement process. The way that you specifically engage with the world and people and everything else. So we try to strip away the context, right? Um, so it starts with a few things. There's this driver piece. What is it that compels us to do what we do? And then how do we actually engage? And so I want to talk about those things in tandem here. And what we learned um, in terms of driver is in some of the questionnaires that, that you filled out. And, and tell me if I'm wrong, because if I am, I mean, you, you need to set me straight. But uh, is that you seem to have a very strong driver about being in community and more than community being in a very um, in a very intimate way. And so some of the references that came from your answers were family, of course, 
Um, you talked about singing in a choir. There were a number of times where you referenced being in sharing experience or experiencing things with a very close circle of people. And from that, what we gather is that this is the way that you best experience the world and that you will strive to experience the world in that uh, group, let's call it. You know, again, if it's familial or societal, whatever, but it's going to be a small, intimate group of people and that you will strive to have the experiences that you enjoy the most or the kinds of things that you want in your life. You will strive to experience it in that way versus, for example, on your own. How does that land? Is that is that a beginning? Yep, accurate? yep. That that seems uh, very accurate to me. Uh, absolutely. I um, so much of my time and attention and energy is focused on um my family directly, uh, expanding out beyond that a little bit into my neighborhood, my surrounding immediate community. Um, and a lot of the work that I do professionally is, is, you know, the larger community, you know, uh, that I interact with as well. And that's definitely at the core, right. I think of my passions. So that makes sense to me. And, and in thinking in terms of a driver and actually an emotional driver and trying again to, to try to not make it contextual, um, what's useful about that is that we, if this is in fact the way, as you say, it's true for you, then what we know about that is that you're going to create these environments so that you can have the experiences you want. And if that environment doesn't exist, you will create it. You will create it to have the experience. So it will be a fundamental driver. It's the way you will create situations. The other thing that we know about you is that you're an innovator. You're, you're a bit of a risk taker that you're comfortable jumping into things and trying them out, experimenting to see what will happen. And that makes you an innovator. You're also um, a very strong organizer. And it seems from your career path and what I've read about you, because we don't know each other that well at this point, um, that you, you, know, you, you do a lot of work in organizational uh, development in particular. And, and so you're going to be very systems oriented. You're going to be attracted to systematizing things structure, uh, being able to weigh to categorize and understand things through systematiz systematization. Ugh, I can't say the word. Does that ring as well? Yeah, absolutely. And so these things go for you in particular, they go hand in hand, um, that you will experiment, you will take risks, you will innovate. And you will, while you're innovating, you will systematize, you will do these things in tandem. And because you do them almost equally, uh, and, and what I'm trying to say is you have a propensity for this, equal propensity for it, is that you can bounce back and forth between these kind of modalities. You can take risks and innovate while you systematize. You can actually system, like you can do it in both directions. You can take risks while you systematize and you can systematize while you take risks. Yeah, it, it, that's super interesting. I, I mean, that that certainly resonates with me. Um, and it's it's always an interesting process going through these types of instruments. Cause I'm trying to think, I'm trying not to overthink it. Right. I'm trying to just share openly without uh, trying to read, you know, between the lines or trying to assert a certain way I want to be viewed. Um, but I, I think that's, uh, that's consistent with um, my, my personal perception of myself cool. at least. Yeah. No, oh, that's, that's great to hear. And so I'll, I'll tell you the other pieces and then we'll go back and, and, talk about it as a whole. Um, these are because because you're right, you don't want to overanalyze you. Because it does, you know, going down the rabbit hole isn't actually useful. What's useful is to understand this as a thing as an entire thing. So you lead with this idea of experimenting, innovating, uh, risk taking, and you also lead with systematizing and organizing things, categorizing things so that you can understand them. As you do that, or after you do that, is how you gather your information. So you will get your information after jumping in and experimenting and systematizing or categorizing. Then as a result of that, and a little bit along the way too, of course, you will get the information you need. Um, and then once you have the information you need, and so starting with the experience, categorizing, getting the information. And then last but not least, you can then envision how things should work. And so when we talk about, so, so this is what we would call your engagement process, that 
you go out there, you take risks, you categorize things, you get the information from that experience and from that mental work. And then you picture how things could work and you basically at that point, pass it on. That's when you can really engage with other people and say, this is what I see happening. Go out and build it because you're not going to build it. You're not the builder. And you'll bring in people at that point. So if you, if you think of this as a, I like to think of it as kind of a hill and the juice or the gas in your tank, the thing that allows you the conviction to push through all of this is the emotional driver piece. So the emotional driver is this idea that we talked about first, that you are looking to have experience in this intimate way with other people. And so that will propel you through the risk and systemization or categorization part of the process. And you can count on that um, driver. You can count on that, that gas to get you all the way up that hill. I'm excited to announce the publication of my new book from HCI Press, The Alchemy of Truly Remarkable Leadership, Ordinary Everyday Actions That Produce Extraordinary Results. Consider how the nature of work has shifted over the past 50 years. With increased globalization, rapid technological advancement, and the shift in economic composition, the average job of today looks very different than the average job of 50 years ago. What will the jobs and organizations of tomorrow look like? Moreover, what does this all mean for organizational leaders? What are the core competencies and capabilities of organizations and their leadership that are prepared for continued disruption and geopolitical and socioeconomic shifts? Regardless of what the future holds, increasingly, leaders need to be socially minded, data-driven, decisive, champions of talent, and disruptors of the traditional notions of leadership, teams, organizations, and work. The alchemy of truly remarkable leadership will help you to explore your own leadership competencies and capabilities and consider ways to apply and implement them into your workplace and personal life. And so now thinking about this as a process, if you will, you've got gas in the tank to get you through that initial process that allows you to take risks, innovate, and categorize things on the way and, and do that with other people, right? <laughs> a small group of people you really care about or you want to have this experience with. And then when you get to the top of that hill, it's time to take your foot off the pedal. That's when the driver changes. And the way that Ravi and I talk about this is this is the point where it's now time to change your modality. Instead of you being the person pushing everything forward, because you will up until that point, now's the time to take your win. And by win, I mean, give yourself the acknowledgement and validation that you, we all need as human beings, not you particular, John, we all need acknowledgement and validation to feel good about ourselves. Um, this is the point where you take the win. And it's important not to externalize this. It's important that you recognize, hey, I made this happen. I got us to the top of the hill. This experience happened. Me and these three, four, 10 people just had this experience because of the work that I do and the way I do it. And you acknowledge yourself, you take that win, you, you know, buy yourself a nice dinner. <laughs> um, and then at that point, we now start going down the hill. And this doesn't mean that it's a bad part of the process or a downside of anything. It just means we change modality. Now is when you start using what you, you know, taking advantage of the experience you just had, get all that information, package it up and get other people involved. And you don't need to push anymore. You don't need to drive it anymore. So the terminology that we use is, what is the engagement process overall? Your engagement process is what I just described, right? Your driver is what gets you to the top of the hill. The green light or that win, that taking that win is where you change modality and take your foot off the pedal. And now you can start to delegate and get other people involved and really build on this thing. So your engagement process, process looks like this, this arc that I described, this hill that we just went up and then go down. The front end of it is you using your emotional driver to get yourself up the hill and build that experience for other people. And then the other side, the back side of the hill is using the information you got from that experience to explain it to other people and delegate responsibility point, you know, create the vision for them, stay in that role as visionary and director, but have them build it out 
And that's what that arc or that hill looks like. Yeah, yeah, that's well, that's really interesting. So I, I'm curious then um, how that kind of relates to kind of the typical profile or types of profiles you see uh, among other clients. So I'll leave you with a couple other points and then I think I'm gonna hand it over to Ravi here. Um, we start with this because you need to know this about yourself. Everybody absolutely needs to know, A, that transition happens, that it's cyclical, that we're gonna go through this process. And when we do, we need to understand exactly how we go through the world. This is where your mojo lies. Now that you understand your process this in this way, very specifically, and you now will have language to articulate it to other people. Hey, this is how I work and this is how I can best help you. Hey, these are the kind of expectations to have when working with me. This is what I'm gonna do. This is where I'm gonna drive this, where I'm gonna hand it off, et cetera. If you know that, once you've gone through that process, then you know how to tap in your mojo. Your mojo comes when you use your process where the mojo disappears, where we get stuck, where we get frustrated and other people get frustrated with us is when we're not following our own process, right? And we start to try to do things to please other people or the way they want to it. I call it process versus results. Do you want me to do my best work or do you want me to do it your way? Which is it? So um, when we do this work and we do this work with everybody, everyone has their own way of doing this. Everyone's engagement process is specific to them. We don't share these with other people, but what we share is this knowledge with each other. What's in common is we're all gonna go through this transition multiple times in our lives. What's in common is we all have a very specific engagement process and way of tapping into our mojo that we need to know about ourselves and that we can explain to each other. Then once you have that, we can help each other do our best work in the world. And Ravi, I'm gonna let you take it from here because this is where the magic happens. Yeah, thanks, Perry. John, John what's, what's interesting is adding to everything Perry said is when you find the people in your tribe that align with you or that you can complement, the magic happens and those lights go off. So as you were describing your engagement process, you and I share a lot of similarities in much of it in, in some of the process elements in the actual engagement steps themselves in the community building, in the team building, in the innovation. So when Perry is describing that and you're nodding your head, you know, I'm getting chills up my spine because we're, you know, we're of the same tribe. What, what a few things that make it that, that my process is a little bit different than yours is I like to actually um, build teams to then execute the elements. And maybe I think you might work towards building processes a little bit heavier than I, but that's the only kind of nuance that's uh, different between us. So you and I speak the same language. We do the same things. We, we, uh, we'd be in the same tribe. So we'd be in a, a similar group. So pretty fun. Um, and that actually tells us, tells a little bit of why we really started uh, TMC, the Moonshot Collective. It's all around peer mentorship and putting groups of people together um, that wanna do great work that want to work with like-minded people. Not exactly the same, right? Complementary, but not exactly the same. Um, but that really want to innovate. Like those are our, our three big criteria. And we really are getting great results with, with the curated groups we put together. And um, that, that's where some of the magic is. And one, one last thing I'd like to share with you in my process itself, because I know you dig the process. Um, my process is actually seek. Seek meaning finding the best solutions, finding the right people, finding the right teams, build. So architect and create what that looks like and then share. Share with my network, share with my team, share with others, you know, evangelize what that thing is. And that's, that's you know, when that's all firing, I'm doing my best work. And that's some of the way we kind of attack this. So I'm, I'm gonna just kind of add to that, John, give you a little, even a little insight into the Moonshot Collective and Ravi and I. One of Ravi's the hero maker, and I'm the big shot whisperer. These are our little nicknames for each other. We play different roles in our organization. My job is to take people through this process, like we're doing with you here now, and help people really understand who they are, why they do things the way they do. Um, it's part of my, I am, consider myself very lucky and very blessed to have this gift that I get to see the best versions of people and things and organizations. Um, the reason I can do that is because I do this background work, you know, to understand things the way that we're talking about them. And then the next step is, what's your language for it? How do you talk about this? 
you know, you create your own language around your process and the way that you do things, then you bring that to the group, like Robbie was talking about. And now we're in um, these, you know, essentially these mastermind groups, we call them, we call it peer mentorship, where we handpick, curate these groups to put these incredible people together to A, share this with each other. And then now that you know it, okay, what are you working on? How can I help you? And so the work that we do in these groups is unbelievable, but it's for each other. So everyone's pushing their agendas forward. Everyone's supporting each other in this incredible way because we know this about ourselves first and foremost, and we know it about each other. So half of the work is kind of on the front end to get to this level of understanding. But from where I sit, that's just where the fun begins because now it's like, okay, what do you want to do in the world? Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you both. I, th that was super interesting. Um, and I appreciate the opportunity to kind of hold the mirror up in front of me and, and, uh, and learn a little bit more about that. And as it relates back to what, how we kind of opened this, um, this episode together, you know, I think about the transitions that I've gone through um, during my career. And, you know, I would even frame it at times of, you know, kind of this dark night of the soul moment where I'm just like having this internal wrestle and trying to really figure out what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, right? So these types of approaches can help us one, kind of learn that about ourselves, um, go through that self-reflective process so we can become more attuned and, and aligned with, you know, what our drivers are and, and how we can move forward in a positive way. And then the other piece I really like about what you're doing with these peer mentor groups is it often feels very lonely when you're going through that transition period, right? And you've already mentioned a, a few times, like this is not unique, like everyone goes through this process. But when you're in the middle of the process, you feel completely alone. And you feel like, you know, what's wrong with me? Like, why, <laughs> why, why am I dealing with this? And, it, and it's, it can be really, really a struggle. And so putting yourself in connection with other people who are going through similar types of things, um, and you can support each other. And like you mentioned, provide that validation to each other about the reality that we're going through this and, and then support each other as you go through it. And then, and then work towards um, achieving something from it as you move through it. I, I think that's really powerful and, and, and helpful. Absolutely agree. And, and that is why we started this because you know, speaking for myself, but Ravi and I had had this conversation many times. The bottom line is the more successful you get, the more isolated you become. Ravi and I have been very lucky to have been very successful at a fairly young age. And that is the experience. And it doesn't matter whether it happens when you're young or it happens when you're older. And as you get more successful and as you become the smarter person in the room and all that kind of stuff, we are conditioned to stop asking for help. And it does become lonely and it becomes extremely difficult. And so we started TMC so that there was a safe place, so that there was a safe place to express your concerns or your doubts. Everything, every conversation we have, every meeting is 100% confidential. That is the first pledge we all make to each other so that you can think out loud and you can go through this process. It's absolutely critical. Excellent. Well, thank you, Perry. Thank you, Ravi. This has really been a fascinating conversation. And I really uh, appreciate the insights that you've provided me, as well as kind of the framing of all of this uh, for the listeners. Because like you said, uh, we, we all go through this, we all will go through it, um, if we haven't already. And it's important for us to, to realize it's completely normal. And, and ultimately, uh, we can come out better for it, you know, through as we go through this process, you can think of the various metaphors, um, you know, of, of change and, and emergence, but ultimately, um, I've found that to be true in my own life, as I've gone through sometimes the painful process of this, these adjustments and shifts, but on the other side of it, it being, you know, even brighter days and, and uh, more opportunities. Um, before we close, I do want to give you both a chance to just share with listeners how they can get um, connected with you and then um, give us the last word on, on the topic today. Yeah, no, thanks, John. Uh, the listeners can get in touch with us. Uh, the easiest way is to our website, themoonshotcollective.com. And the, the last thing I want to just emphasize, and, and you brought it up, John, a few times, leadership is lonely. That's a phrase I use all the time with, with our teams and our groups. And, and we reinforce that today. Having 
whether it's you know, the TMC or having another group that you can use as your trusted advisory board to go through this challenge and support process is a real next, great next step you know, as we all individually develop. Excellent, thank you. And Perry? Yeah, I would, I would echo those comments. Um, if you are a leader, if you are somebody who gets, gets things done, you know, we work exclusively with people who know they're great at what they do and want to be surrounded, <clears throat> surrounded by other people that do great things in the world. We want to hear from you. Awesome. Well, thank you both. I really appreciate your time today. I encourage listeners to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Perry and Ravi can do for you. Check out their instruments, check out their website. Uh, and as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. We are excited about the launch of HCI's new magazine, Human Capital Leadership. Human Capital Leadership is a free interactive e-magazine designed to help individuals, leaders, and organizations find innovative approaches to maximize their human capital potential. We will be publishing issues quarterly in August, November, February, and May. Check out the first issue and let us know what you think. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.